So this video is going to be pretty broad about all the different rodents that we keep. So if you have specific questions about specific rodents and how we breed them, or maybe want some advice on how to breed them yourself, let us know in the comments or shoot us a message on Instagram and we'd be happy to answer those questions and maybe even shoot a more specific YouTube video on that topic. Hey, it's Courtney with Leviathan Snakes and today we're going to be talking about the different rodents that we breed as feeders for our ball pythons and boas. So here we keep rats, mice, and African soft borers, or ASFs, that we feed to our ball pythons and boa constrictors. Um, we keep these rodents in particular because they're what we're comfortable feeding our snakes. Some people um, might feed their snakes like hamsters and gerbils, but that's not something that we want to feed our snakes, so we don't <laughs> breed those as feeders here. Um, all of the rodents that we breed, we do breed as feeders, um, though if you are looking to start breeding mice or rats as pets, you may get some tips out of this video as well. We feed all of our rodents Missouri Rodent Breeder. Uh, we find that they get the nutrition that they need using this. We don't have any rodents that have rusting on the sides. We will supplement sometimes with maybe some fresh fruit for our rats if we're giving them treats, but really their staple diet is that Missouri Breeder feed. We get this at the local horse supply store. You can find it online as well at different pet supply stores, but they uh, will charge quite a bit for shipping a 50 pound bag. We've never found them at your box pet stores such as Petco or PetSmart, um, at least not in the big 50 pound bag. So there are three different ways that you can feed rodents to your ball python or boa or other big snake. And that would be frozen thawed, pre-kill or live rodents. The first one we're going to talk about is frozen thawed, which is when you purchase your rodent already euthanized, frozen, and in a package that you can later thaw out and warm up to over room temperature and offer to your snake. Um, this poses a lot of benefits because they're easy to find. You can get them at any pet store. You can order them online in bulk if you have a lot of snakes to feed, or you can get them in small packages if you only have one or two snakes. Um, you can find them at any pet store that you go to, uh, the box pet stores that everyone's familiar with or local pet stores tend to have them. And they won't injure your snake <laughs> by scratching or biting them, so they're safer for your snake. The only thing to be careful about with your frozen thawed is making sure that you're actually receiving quality rodents in your frozen thawed packaging. We have in the past bought rodents that had a bad smell. I'm not saying they were rotten or bad in that sense, but they had a very strong uh, urine smell in the packaging once they'd been thawed out. And you might say, well, they're gonna use the bathroom when they you know, are euthanized. But we've had so many good experiences with big stores online um, purchasing uh, bulk frozen thawed that have nice, beautiful, fluffy rodents that come out with only the regular amount of rodent smell that I know that there's a difference between good and bad quality frozen thawed. Um, if you are feeding one or two snakes and you're just getting the single or the small bulk packages from one of your box pet stores, just be careful. There was a time that I was at one of these stores, noticed that the refrigerator was open, went over to close it and saw that their frozen thawed, um, a frozen thawed rodent was hanging out, went to put it back in and felt that it had completely thawed out. I went and let the um, attendant at the store no, but I you know I have no way of knowing if they threw out spoiled merchandise or stuck it back in to let it freeze back up. The next feeding type is live rodents. Um, a lot of people like the idea of feeding live, especially if you have a lot of snakes that you're feeding. It's quick and easy and it is the natural way that that animal would eat by hunting and attacking a nice fresh prey item. There are drawbacks to live, which would be the injure, um, an injured snake. There's also the drawback that if your snake becomes picky and only eats live, if you're not breeding yourself or you have a shortage or you're unable to find live from a local supplier, um, it might be harder to feed your snake frozen thawed afterwards. Um, so you just have to weigh the pros and cons of what you are comfortable feeding your snake. Make sure you have a local vet that you're comfortable bringing your animal to if they do get injured by a rodent. Another good thing about live is you tend to be able to find them pretty availably. If you, availably, is that a word? <laughs> you can find them pretty readily available at a local pet store or you can always try Craigslist uh, where you can find a lot of 
local breeders that um, sell rodents, rats or mice, and I would suggest that you let them know what you are purchasing those rodents for. Some people are breeding their rats as pet quality pet animals. They don't want their um, bred rats to be used as feeders. So just be respectful when you're purchasing a uh, rodent off of a local breeder's um, advertisement. And finally, you can um, pre-euthanize your rodents, which is if you grow them up live or you purchase them live and you do the euthanasia yourself and you're not freezing or thawing them out. Uh, Pre-kill is helpful because it doesn't pose the risk to your snake of possible uh, spoiled rodent. Uh, it also has no way of injuring your snake if it's pre-euthanized. Just be careful if you plan on using pre-euthanasia for rodents because there are different state laws that vary um, across the country. I'm speaking specifically from the U.S., so I don't know what things are like overseas. Uh, I'm just talking about what I've read from the American Veterinary Medical Association uh, and their guidelines posted online. Um, we have been told in the past, oh, just throw them in the freezer, They're go they will go to sleep. That is not, that is not okay. <laughs> Don't do that. It's actually one of the um, two ones that are specifically listed as not a legal way to euthanize your rodents. You may not um, euthanize through hypothermia or drowning. The accepted ways would be lethal injection, which you cannot do if you're going to be feeding that rodent to your snake. You also can't do it if you're not a vet. Um, and then uh, euthanasia through an inhalant such as uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, again, make sure that uh, you have the appropriate training if that's required by state. Um, it may be that you need to be a veterinarian technician. It may be that you need training as a layperson from a veterinarian. Um, and then there's also cervical dislocation. I believe that is an approved method. So as I mentioned, there are three different rodents that we feed our ball pythons and our boa constrictors for that matter. Um, we have mice, rats, and African soft furs. So I'm gonna go over the benefits of each of these rodents. The mice are easy to find. You can get them at pet stores, you can get them from local breeders, and they are generally pretty easy to keep. They have a low odor, and being very small rodents, they don't eat too much, they don't drink too much, they're very easy to clean up after. The males do give off an odor. I think it's you know probably part of the like um, territory thing. Um, and that can stink a little bit, but if you clean up after your rodents and you have them in a maybe separate area, it won't bother you. At least it's never bothered us, and I really thought it was going to, so I'm a little, I guess, more picky than some people might be. They, as far as feeding them to your snake, it is generally said that snakes will take mice easier than they'll take rats. Some people will say that they're like candy to snakes. Um, they have a lot of benefits as far as being easy to feed, being easy to care for, but if you are trying to get your snake up to a certain weight to breed them, they will be a little harder to put that weight on your snake. Uh, they don't grow up to be very large, so if you have like an adult boa or an adult ball python, an adult mouse might not be big enough to keep your snake fed. You may have to feed multiple mice. And if you've got a picky snake, it won't be easy to feed them multiple times. So if you're feeding a young pet, mice are probably great, great option. But if you know that you're going to get them on rats at some point, it's usually better to switch them over as soon as possible. The next rodent that we keep are rats. Rats are great as um, animals to keep. They make really good pets. Ours are very well handleable. All of our rodents can be handled, but they very, I would say rats are the best, and then mice, and then the ASFs. Rats get large enough to feed your snakes less frequently. The adult males will probably be too large for a regular uh, sub-adult or maybe even a female or male adult ball python, but those big large rats will be good if you have a large snake such as a boa constrictor. Um, we generally, if a male gets up to that size, they are kept as breeders, or if we um, feed them, we feed them to our boa constrictors. Um, some people say that 
ASFs and mice are easier to um, grow up because they won't get too big. So as long as you keep an eye on it, you can usually get your rats to the right size and um, not let them get too large to be eaten by your adult snakes. Rats also have more, like they're a lot fattier. They have the complete nutrition that your ball python needs and they will help them put on a little more weight than a mice will. A mice. A mouse will. Finally, we also have the African softfurs. I can't give you as much information on them because we do have very fresh colonies on these. The drawbacks to the ASFs are that they're very territorial, so you have to be very careful with colony breeding, and they're not um, usually as hand handleable. They have not been domesticated like rats and mice have, so you have to be a little more careful, make sure you don't get bit. But as far as we know, they breed like crazy and they are very good for the snake. That's what they would eat naturally. That's what they would eat in the wild. So like, you know, the others, they have the complete nutritional value that your snake needs. They are also notoriously low odor and low maintenance. A lot of people like ASFs. A lot of ball python breeders are really excited about having ASF colonies. The drawback, another drawback to ASFs is that they're a little harder to get your hands on. Mice and rats you can get at pet stores and are pretty easy to find from local breeders. ASFs aren't so much the case. You can't find them frozen thawed. You can't find them at a pet store. You may be find, able to find them through a local breeder, but you're not supposed to be selling them across state lines or moving them across state lines. So they're um, a little harder to keep a, or a, get a hold of so that you can keep them and grow them up. Each of these rodents take about three weeks to gestate. Um, your litters will be born between 20 and 24 days and that just depends on the rodent and also when they get pregnant in their cycle. Um, there is a heat that your rodents go through right after giving birth and if they get pregnant during that heat cycle, they um, tend to take a few extra days to have that litter actually, which I found out today when I was looking it up for this video. <laughs> we have three different ways that we know of to breed rodents or that we're at least going to talk about to breed these rodents and we're going to call them monogamous, colony breeding, and harem breeding. We only use two of these methods. Uh, we don't have any monogamous pairs. Um, the monogamous pair would be if you have one male and one female that you keep together and you keep them together all the time. The male is never taken out, even when the litter is dropped. And when you're monogamous breeding, you tend to get litters very close together because they will get pregnant immediately after having a litter and laying that litter as soon as their current pups get weaned. Um, there are some drawbacks to monogamous breeding, which is you only have one female paired to one male, so it might not be as efficient. And if you have enough snakes to breed rodents, you're probably looking for an efficient way to breed as many as you can, as fast as you can. Um, and also uh, having a male in with the female may cause higher stress. It may cause smothering or trampling of those pups and uh, it makes them wean faster than they would if that mother was not pregnant again immediately afterwards. The next one that we're going to be talking about is what we call harem breeding. Um, we harem breed our rats. They're the only rodents that we harem breed and that is we cycle the males to each female. So each male is paired with two females at a given time and once they show signs of pregnancy we take them out and put them into a maternity tub where they can nurse and raise up those um, pups until they are weaned. Then we put any um, females that we want to keep into a grow-out tub, we put the males in their own grow-out tub because at five weeks those males can start getting the females pregnant. Um, we harem breed because we want to know which rats came from which parents. We don't want to inbreed any of our rats. Um, we've heard mixed things about inbreeding rodents, mostly that it doesn't affect them until a few generations, but if we can prevent any um, cannibalizing of litters or if we can prevent any birth defects or difficult births uh, we would like to so we don't inbreed our rodents as much as we can help it um, and we cycle our males out pretty frequently to get in new genes 
Another benefit to harem breeding is that it's easier to stop and it's easier to hold back and make sure you don't get too many rodents. You might be saying, well, that's not a problem. I need as many as I can get. Uh, but you know, there is when, when it's not a full-time job, it can get to be a, a little too much. So if you want a way to easily maintain and predict the amount of pups you are going to be getting, I recommend the harem style breeding. The final one that uh, we use would be colony breeding. We colony breed both our ASFs and our mice, and that is having established colonies of either two to three females per male and leaving them in together all the time. Um, these, ro these mice will um, always be in the same pair, especially when it comes to those ASFs. If you take them out, the male out and put a new male in or try to cycle those rodents, they will get very territorial and attack um, that new uh, rodent that you put in with them. So once we have an established colony, they are together all the time. Uh, this allows for very fast breeding. They tend to get pregnant very quickly after they have a litter and they tend to wean those babies off very quickly as well. If you want to start a new colony, you can at a very young age take the mice or ASFs that you want to start your new colony and put them together to establish their own little colony. So if you have two colonies, you might take uh, two or three females from one at a very young age and a male from one at a very young age, and you can put those together and you'll have more luck than if you were to take adults and put them in together. We generally don't grow up males of these rodents. Rats are very social animals and they get along very well. And if you put a couple males together and that are properly introduced, they'll get along great. When it comes to the mice and the a ASFs, they tend to fight and be very aggressive towards each other. So we try not to grow up too many males and keep them together. Uh, just for the safety of those animals. When it comes to rodents, the males will be larger than the females unless they're pregnant, and then the females will be enormous. You can tend, you usually are able to tell when a female is pregnant about two weeks into her pregnancy, and since they have a three-week gestation period, you have about a week to prepare. You'll notice that she's pregnant because she will begin to lose the hair around her nipples, so her nipples will look more pronounced. This is easier to tell on a first pregnancy um, because the hair won't you know, necessarily grow back as quickly. Um, and then they get very large, very fast, um, and their bellies kind of come outwards. So if you are looking at her back and she looks like that, <laughs> you probably have a pregnant lady on your hands. So once you get a litter of rodents, they grow up pretty quickly. This one right here is one of our recent litters. She is about three weeks old. She's three weeks going on four weeks. And as you can see, she is crawling around by herself. She has her eyes open. She actually is eating solid food. I don't know that she's um, completely weaned, but she is in the grow up tub with other females. And, um, you know, she's able to um, be in there with her mother actually, so she might nurse a little bit. Um, but this is their cute stage, as I call it. Very cute. Um, they spend about, a oh, about two weeks that really pinky closed eyes, um, phase. So if you have a, you know, smaller snake, that would be what they would eat, that little pup. And then they turn into what we ourselves call crawlers, which is when they might not have their eyes completely open um, and they might not be walking great, but they do move on their own and they kind of scooch across the tank. Um, they've got their fur at that point and um, they are not yet weaned. Um, this is what we refer to, at least Stephen and I, uh, this is what we refer to as their weanling stage when they start weaning um, and they have their eyes open, they crawl around, but they're still smaller than what we'd refer to as a small rat. Um, the small rats tend to be maybe four to five weeks, and then after that, it just depends on the male or the female um, what size uh, rat you're looking for. Mice are different because mice stay a lot smaller, um, but as far as the pinky to crawler to weanling or pinky to hopper to um, small mouse, um, it's about the same amount of time. Um, you can, you generally are able to tell the difference between the males and females when they only have a tiny amount of hair because uh, the females have nipples. Um, the males, male rats do not have nipples. And so even before their testicles drop, you can tell which ones are males 
and which ones are females based on looking at their belly. Um, once they reach a little bit of an older age, you know, a couple weeks old, uh, the male's testicles distend and they're very easy to tell if you've got a male or a female because you just have to look behind them. So again, if you have any questions or have any ideas about a video that you would be interested in, feel free to drop a comment below or send us a direct message on Instagram where we are at Leviathan period snakes. We respond to all of our direct messages and honestly to all of our YouTube comments. Um, we love answering questions for people and we love people giving us um, tips and advice that maybe we didn't think of to add into our video. So um, whatever you can think of, feel free to reach out to us if you liked the video, please like, give us a subscription, because um, that's what I'm supposed to do. And let us know what you'd like to see next from us. Again, I'm Courtney with Leviathan Snakes, and thank you so much for watching.